The following presentation is brought to you by Asylum Wargaming. It says off air. No, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> See Andy and Remington Steel Show on a Tuesday night. It's the Andy and Remington Steel Show for your home delight. I'm talking about Age of Sigma and everything else that is cool. I'm talking about Warhammer Fantasy, it's easy to learn the rules. <laughs> Golden Weasel Delight. Golden Weasel Delight. That sounds like a really poorly translated snack product, Mr. Remington. <laughs> it does. It's a complete, this tonight is the launch of a brand new product. That's correct, but it's not edible, unfortunately. The Golden Weasel Delight, indeed. So, Mr. Rem, you missed last week. I what did. I'm with that. No, sorry about that. I was, uh, where was I? It was I, so exciting, he doesn't even remember. Yeah, I had some family stuff to do, and it dragged on, and I couldn't get back in time, so I missed the show. But I saw Crabbington Steel. Yes, he filled in quite adequately for you, I would say. He did quite a sterling job, didn't he, your cousin, old Crabbington? He's, he's burying his head in the sand at the minute as we speak so folks of course it's the andy and rem show episode 52 now we'll have to explain to a few people why that doesn't technically mean that it's been one year because if you think about it episode one started at day zero so technically episode 53 is one year so for the one year special next week we're going to hopefully get a few guests on and in-depth analyze the entire year of the show and of course of age of sigma in general one year so that's going to be exciting but for this episode of course is the golden weasel special those of you who have been paying attention which should be all of you will know that we've been running the golden weasel painting awards because there are certain categories that don't get enough love when it comes to the golden demon and other more conventional painting awards so we've gone for the slightly quirkier categories in the hope that we can shine some light on some maybe underappreciated artists. So, shall we have a look to see who's in the audience tonight? Because there are quite a few of them in there. We've got Amy Snugs, Andrew Harris, Andrew Wade, a couple of Andrews there, Bazooka J Rambo, Drunken underscore Elf, Edwin Desvoart, Fernando Lima, Gary Waddingham, Graham Rigg, I don't know, 46, Christopher82, Mickey Jenver, Oscar Dahlstrom, Paul Bentley, Paul Conti, Pezapu. Raphael Marge, Ratface, <laughs> Rob Lloyd, sweet, Ronnie Dodd, Russell Higgins, Skeleton Flower, That Guy 513, YouTube Newbie, among others. There's other people dropping in constantly. Mini Warrior right there, Sebastian Blau, Stu Gibson. So, wow, we've got a World Cup audience here tonight, haven't we? Full of different nationalities. We certainly have. There's an international flavour on the show every week in the comments. The live chat is the place to be. If you don't catch this show live, you are missing out, quite frankly, because there's non-stop excitement in there, some of which isn't suitable for broadcast, so you really have to be there to see it all. I tell you what, Andy, you know, I was going to mention something, because I've been looking at a lot of um, paint jobs, you could say, from uh, from people, from uh, fan, fans of our channel, and um, Jesus, they're so good. Some of them are so good out there, and I'm just thinking, all this time we've been spending entertaining these Warhammer fans. They've been getting better painters, becoming better painters. And, you know, are we as well? I don't think we are. Do you think they're leaving us in the dust? I do. <laughs> I do. Or leaving us in the potpourri, in your case. <laughs> right then. So, first things first. Before we get to the Golden Weasel Awards, there is one thing that it kind of dropped last week. But I want to get your take on this before we go on to anything else. This right here. The global campaign is about to start. Well, technically it starts in one month's time, but they've actually announced it now. So apparently you have to pledge your allegiance to one of the Grand Alliances 
and then we'll be doing battle. Okay. Shake the realms. What, do you have to submit your result then or something? Yes. And it says your battles will matter like never before, so presumably that means they'll matter at all. Because I can't remember battles ever really mattering on any Games Workshop campaign. What do you think well, of that? Yeah, I think that's fantastic. I think we should definitely on our next um, on our next battle meeting, we should choose one of these sides and submit the result. And I can tell you, I'm going for I'm going for do destruction. Is it? Yeah, I think you're going to be firmly on the side of destruction, aren't you, with your current love for the Oryx? Yeah, and ogres do like them guys. And I think I'm firmly entrenched in the forces of order. With my stormcast and dwarred in <laughs> so i may have to leave the undead for a while but i think that's all right a couple of juicy armies on each side there i think we can play out some excellent battles and submit our results which will of course be given extra attention by the people writing out this campaign because if you think about it an a-list game result must be worth at least 16 times anyone else's game result <laughs> I think that's fair enough, don't you? Yeah, I think there should be a prize somewhere in there too. Mm. So, Mr. Ren, without any further ado, shall we get a couple of the Golden Weasel Awards underway? Right, yes, we should. And While you're sorting out the sharing of the, of the Facebook post, I'm going to tell the audience that we do have some prizes lined up for the winners, some of which we can't announce right now because they're still in the works, but there will be a prize for everyone, and there will also be a Golden Weasel trophy, which will be going to either the winner of the most awards, or in the case of a tie, the person who won their award by the highest margin. So very, very exciting. Among the prizes that we can announce right now that we have some vouchers for Asylum Wargaming, we have a Dark Ops portal slash archway set. So because there's going to be quite a wide variety of prizes, then we're going to get in touch with the winners individually and see which ones they would like them most and then if there's somebody that wants a particular prize that nobody else wants of course they can have it otherwise we're gonna to have to negotiate to make sure everyone gets something that they're happy with so candy okay, i'm ready with category a beards beards indeed so, so you got to start screen sharing that mr remington oh i should oh, i need to screen share yeah yes you do you're gonna do that okay God, i have to do everything don't i hold on a minute Okay, here it comes. Cravington Steel wouldn't have had this problem. Uh, no, you wouldn't have been able to operate a computer either. So. I'm sensing a lot of bitterness from you towards Crabbington Steel since his well, he's legendary appearance. Bloody crab. All right, here we go. So, Andy posted the first category for the Golden Weasel Awards, and you can see the Golden Weasel Trophy there. And this one was the best beard job. You like and we had Mickey Jenver with a glorious a uh, contribution there that was a, a dwarf Dwardian champion that's a fine beard fine gray beard there okay and then we had my personal favorite Gary Waddington maybe thinking about tree beard from Lord of the Rings he submitted and a tree a tree man yeah, I'm seriously thinking when my bit of facial hair gets long enough, I'm going to turn it into that. <laughs> or a tree lord. I, I'm loving that. It looks like he's spray airbrushed some of that, right? That's how it looks to me. It's certainly a fine beard, then. Very nice. And then Amy Snugs with this Duardin uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, she could have entered any of her fire slayers in this, really, couldn't she? They've all got fantastic beards. Very nice beard. And we have James Maybury here. How about him? Another fire slayer. I do like that base. The base has got a beard as well. Maybe you should get a bonus mark for that. Yeah, it does kind of, doesn't it? I think you should have pointed that out. That might have swayed a few votes. Yeah, you see, that's uh, it's kind of clever. A double beardage. And we have Patrick Close with some dwarf miners. So multiple beard action there. A, a, a beard from every direction. So you know what? They're one of the nicest um, plastic dwarf miner paint jobs I've seen, actually. They're really good. Yeah, they are really fun to paint, actually, those particular miners. Uh-huh. 
And wow, this, we had quite a few entries for this one. Look at that, Christopher Norling painted this. This is his latest beard. I don't know what that is. It's, a, it's like a dwarf dwarf. That is quite a pink beard, isn't it? It's like a bubblegum beard, shall we say. A dwarf <laughs> who's been chomping on too much bubblegum, he blows a big bubble and then it just bursts all over his beard and he can never wash it out. But of course he's not allowed to shave because he's a dwarf. So he's stuck with it forever. Well, I think he's had to cut it a little bit short, otherwise he would be tripping over his beard, wouldn't he? He's definitely a bit stumpy. Um, that's a fine gem in the middle of his helmet as well. Yeah, it's a shame uh, this wasn't the gems category. No. This is Cynthia Dagg. Hmm. Cynthia Dagg, sorry. A white beard going on there. Yes. Well, there you go, guys. That was our submissions for the beard. Wow. Well, uh, Andy, do you have a winner? We certainly do. So... We can get off Mr. Remington's screen share and head over to mine because here's the picture of the infamous Golden Weasel and the winner of the finest beard Golden Weasel Award is... Can we get a drum roll? That was a pathetic drum roll. Oh, how about this? Bum, 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 bum. Gary Waddingham with the tree's beard. Yes. That is quite a tremendous beard, isn't it? That is superb. Uh, kind of a, a nice original idea there. You finally found the drum roll, have you? Yeah. Well, you can have that ready for next time. But look at that. Swaying majestically in the breeze, almost like my hair, but not quite as majestic. Wow. What a great, uh, a great paint job that is. Blue beard. Wonderful, wonderful beard indeed. And I like the glow effects on that model, don't you? Yeah, I, I would assume it's airbrushed. Yeah, it looks it. Looks like a very, very... It's sort of simple, but it's very, very good, just the overall paint job. But of course, this was purely for the beard. The rest of the model is not taken into account, only the beard. Okay. So, there we go with our first winner. So we're on to category B now. Uh, am I sharing? You certainly are. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Okay, so category B is farm animals. Cows, pigs, goats, chickens, one entry per person. And Cynthia Sarag with the OG piggies. Very nice. It looks like one of those piggies, like the one on the left, has left a little present there. Well, I think that's a little cart because it's too fat to move. Oh. Which is even more amazing if you think about it. <laughs> and Patrick Close, some nice squiggies. Yes, I'm not sure that they technically qualify as farm animals, but they're close enough. I like them. They're certainly pink, like piggies. And we have a Paul Conte, piggies under attack. Nice. Do you remember the Muppet Show? They had pigs in space. I do not remember that. No? Okay. And Christopher Nurling, it's a dog, so that should count, right? And he said, yes, this is a puppet version of a zombie chihuahua. So I'm circling the front of it there. Yeah, zombie chihuahua indeed. Wow. As you know, of course, the majority of farms around the world keep a zombie chihuahua just to keep all the other animals in check. That is a superb paint job. If you look at that, um, the scale of that is as big as this thumbnail, isn't it? So let me just zoom in. That is top notch. Top dog. That is quite an amazing zombie chihuahua. Okay, let's just see if we had any other submissions. As I try and come out of this like that. No, nope, that was the last submission. Marvel as Mr. Remington tries to navigate the internet. <laughs> so, the final award for right now, before we talk about something else for a minute, I'm going to get this ready and share the wonderful old golden weasel image right there. Okay then, folks. Let's have a drum roll. The winner of the Farmyard Animal Award is... Bum, 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 bum. It is the piggies. Yes, a 
round of applause for the piggies painted by Dreddy right there. Mm. It's a very inquisitive expression on this one on the right, isn't it? I, I don't think that's a cart on the left. I think that pig on the right is smelt foul play. I don't know. I think you can see little wheels there. I think it is a cart. Four, you can see two wheels definitely on this side. Now, the one thing that's interesting about these miniatures in particular, I remember there was, it was kind of an unboxing of them, and they actually have buttholes on the miniatures, which is more detail than you would normally get on the average model, isn't it? It is. So I like the fact that they're not just your standard one colour as well for a pig, because you do see pigs in all different shapes and sizes and colours all around the world, don't you? Maybe they're German piggies. Maybe. Maybe pigs that are tattooed with the German flag would be interesting. <laughs> All right. So what, what's next, Andy? Well, let's drop the old screen share for a minute after offering our congratulations to the two winners so far. Oh, there is prizes, by the way, guys. There yes. Be, I mean, there real will be, prizes. There will be real prizes. Uh, Mr. Remington, we don't think we mentioned it earlier, but you have got at least one prize to provide, haven't you, yourself? I do. Now, um... Andy has kind of adopted my unicorn, which was supposed to be part of my Wood Elf army, but they've kind of, unicorns have kind of become mythological in the realist sense in Edge of Sigma right now. But I do have a twin, an unpainted twin. <gasps> Painted metal Games Workshop unicorn. A and replica of Cecil the Magical Unicorn, is that what you're saying right now? That's correct, and it doesn't come with a base. So you can choose a round base, a square base, whatever you want. And that is my donation. Well, there you go. So one of the Golden Weasel Award winners is going to be winning a replica of Cecil the Magical Unicorn. What more could you possibly ask for? So, Mr. Rem, one thing that people missed, I think, last week, because you weren't here to push your agenda for this one particular topic that you really love a lot, is actually the geek or nerd confessions segment. Oh, yeah. I did have a little, a better song for this this time. I can't, I can't remember it now. How did it go? It's kind of, it, was, it did sound cool before. Oh, I've got it. Ready? I think we're always ready. The nerd confession song. What's your nerd confession now? I don't think it's very cool. What's your nerd confession now? Won't you take me back to school? What's your nerd confession, baby? What's your nerd confession, baby? What's your nerd confession? Well, folks, you heard the man. Get some nerd confessions into the comments. And we'll have to do a couple ourselves, won't we? Because oh, it was yeah. a few weeks ago we started this, so I've had time to think of at least one. My nerd confession is that at school, every day, I used to sit in the library reading the latest issue of White Dwarf magazine. Wow. That's kind of cool. I used to like get White Dwarf, but I'd never read it from page to page. I'd just go to the fantasy bits. And there was like only like two or three pages of that. Now the old white dwarves, they were cool because they had like pages of the latest, you know, Marauder miniatures or Citadel miniatures. So I used to love all that. My my nerd confession this week is I hate painting miniatures when you're just base coating them and then you wash them and they still look a bit crap. And then you do your first layer and it starts to look a bit better. And then you just start to fall in love with the miniature and you just can't put it down. You know, when you get to that second layer of highlights, suddenly it all becomes worthwhile. That's wait, a minute, wait a minute, there is a second layer of highlights. <laughs> it's a third and fourth as well. <laughs> that's, that's beyond my skill level then. <laughs> but I know what you mean though, when you're painting a miniature and you've just got the base coat on and it just looks like a horrible mess. Because it's really either highlights or washes that make everything look amazing. So it's only after that point that you can start to be proud of it, I think. Shall we go over to the audience and see what they're saying about this? We've got a couple of confessions in here. Mickey Genver is uh, being quite revealing there. Wow. 
teaching my niece to paint. First step, I taught her to lick the brush. She likes the real metal ones. Mm. I don't know if in youngsters should be encouraged to lick the brush, especially when they're painting metal maintained lead. That's potentially poisoning a child. YouTube newbie one says my nerd confession is magical juice comes out of my magical horn. He must be related to Cecil the magical unicorn then. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's never shown his face because he is actually a unicorn and he know that hunters would go after him for his prized horn. <laughs> Drunken Elf says played bloody Magic the Gathering for four years even during class. Discussed it during foreign languages in a foreign language. That is taking it quite far. Sebastian Blau, my nerd confession. Um, sorry, nothing. I was a kind of a popular guy at school. Well, that clearly doesn't count. <laughs> it's a nerd confession. Now, Disqualified. Christopher82 has got my favourite one. My confession is I fall asleep to audiobooks of Norse mythology. He's a man after my own heart, that guy. You, you can put, give me some links for those, could you, mate? Uh, Edwin, Edwin Zvart says, bragging about my world third in W-O-W? World of Warcraft? Yeah, that would be World of Warcraft. I'm not sure what he means. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, three th. That's not actually a word. Um, Fluffy Dread. My nerd confession is that I read Warhammer Fantasy Battle supplements regularly in bed while the wife looks on despairingly. <laughs> it's too late. She's married to you, mate. There's nothing you can. Do. Nothing she can do about it now. <laughs> Warhammer Fantasy Battle supplements. Not even the main rule book supplements. Which ones though? That's what we want to know. That could change everything. Uh, there's one from Newbie there. My nerd confession is I secretly sleep with the Space Wolf Codex under my pillow. Mm. I'm not sure about that. We've, I think we've got the best confessions this week. People have really been saving them up. Oh, here's one from Rob Lloyd. Sweet! Nerd confession. I borrowed all the 1980s BBC Shakespeare audio plays from my school library. That is really nerdy, man. But impressive. That's, that might be too much for this show, in fact. If Shakespeare maybe had more goblins in it. Stu Gibson. My nerd confession is, while my mates played football during lunch times, I was in the library reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Sounds pretty cool to me. What would have been a much better nerd confession would have been, if while they were playing football, you were the goalkeeper while reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Because that was about the standard of goalkeeping in the average school playground or PE lesson, wasn't Were it? You, did they stick you in goal, Andy? No, I was actually good at football. Oh. That's a surprise. Where did you play? Up front? Generally. Anywhere in the whole attacking realm. Mm. I was pretty damn tasty at tennis and badminton as well, actually. you got the height, haven't you? Yeah, not so good. I was okay at rugby. I was good mainly against the smaller people because I was a fast runner. Whenever I was put up in, against all the like the big, hefty kind of people, I would usually just hide to avoid any unwanted physical contact. Well, Matez Schaefer, he says, I prefer to be the dungeon master in RPGs because I get bored quickly. As a DM, I can advance the story when I'm no longer interested in the current ramblings. Amen to that, brother. When you're uh, when you're just a player, you, you you get a bit bored waiting for other people to uh, deliberate over what they're going to do, don't you? That's quite an interesting confession there from Dreddy. I played soccer once, instantly broke my wrist. No one knows how I managed that. Yeah, I don't know how you instantly break your wrist. Did it make contact with the the ground or the ball, perhaps? Or was it just the act of stepping onto the field was so stressful that just the pressure had to give somewhere and it was just the wrist that broke? Uh, skeleton flower. Sorry, I missed you before. I learned English in order to understand what they said in Final Fantasy VII. I was a lonely kid. 
<laughs> that's commitment for you. That's quite impressive, actually. You hear quite a few tales like that from the non-native English speakers in the community, how they picked up the language. Because not everyone necessarily did it at school. Or even if they did, they supplemented their learning by watching like TV programs and such. That's true. Well, that was, a, that was a good one this week. So are we ready for another installment of the Golden Weasel, Andy? We certainly are. So what's up next, Mr. Remington? Well, let me get the old screen share on. Here we go. It's a uh, dangerous time whenever Remington starts screen sharing anything. Category C, unappealing butt cheeks. You have a few days to show us your most unappealing butt cheeks. Now, I think we only had a few entries for this one. Four, in fact. Uh, here's a few unappealing butt cheek entries. This is an interesting butt cheek. It's kind of striped or flayed. Yes, it's, it looks like exposed flesh where all the skin's been peeled off. That was Christopher Neurling. Since it's supposed to be unappealing, I can't post a picture of Sigvald's butt, so the doppelganger will have to do. Yeah, he finds Sigvald's butt so appealing that he didn't think it qualified for this category, is what he's saying there. Uh, there you go, that's Dreddy's. Yeah, that's a little bit on the grotesque side, isn't it? I just need the sound effect to go with that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's... I mean, look at all that, it's like, stretched... That's really or whatever it is from between each cheek. It's actually really well painted. All right, next one, Mickey Genvar. Wow. Here's another one that could use some sound effects, like. Wow, that's a bubble butt, isn't it? It is. Okay. And finally, Oscar Dahlstrom, a Korgarath, his better side. Yeah, that's yeah, not necessarily as unappealing as a Nurgle, but just by Nurgle's very nature, having pustules and whatnot all over it. But certainly you wouldn't want to wake up with that in your face, would you? I think he's just realised he can't fit through that um, gate, can he? I don't think he could. He's looking quite angry about it, from okay. what we can see from the back. So, um... Okay then, there's that ward. So, if we can get a drum roll. The winner of the incredible butt cheeks, unappealing in their nature, is Mickey Jenver. A worthy winner, I think you'll agree. I mean, look at the wrinkles and everything. And look at all the little boils, and it's just horrible, isn't it? Are you just mesmerised by it? I am. Look how unappealing it is. I mean, if you were walking down a dark alley and suddenly an unappealing pair of butt cheeks appeared in front of you, this would be right up there with those that you would least like it to be, wouldn't it? Mickey says, everyone likes my butt. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Well, if anyone has ever wanted to win an award before for having an unappealing butt, then I'd be surprised, but this model has certainly taken the cake today. All right, so hopefully well, not on its butt. Let's go to the next category. I believe this is category D: eyeballs. Show us your Ooh. best. Model. So we've only got a couple of entries to this one. First off, we have uh, a beholder, I believe, from D and D. Yes. And that is Dreddy's submission there. What wow, some fantastic multiple eyes there. Yeah, that big central eye, definitely you can see the detail that's gone into that, can't you? Yeah. There's a computer game we used to play. You, you got to this cave and you got this beholder there and you, you had to cast so many spells on it because if you didn't, it would just instantly vaporize you. I think there have been lots of games involving beholders over the years. Yeah, uh, brilliant. Um, so there you go. Oh, here's an interesting one. Danny Ashby. This looks like a dark Eldar. Yes. With a bit of an eyeball going on there on the sail. Which is interesting. Sky, is that a sky cutter, is it called? I'm not sure what the dark Eldar things are called. 
uh, is Christopher Nerling. Wow. Again, that is an amazingly painted miniature. It's like a disturbed child. Is that a Malifaux miniature? It probably is. Anything that's just really weird looking and creepy. If you don't know where it's from, it's a safe bet that it's usually Malifaux. But yeah, look at the creepiness of the eyes. That is superb. Uh, Amy Snugs. Oh, talk about creepy crawlies. It's a giant spider. Yeah, speaking of things you wouldn't want to appear in your face in the morning, there's one, definitely. You wouldn't want to lock eyes with that, would you? Okay, and... Ooh, Mickey Genva. Ooh. Look at that eye there. Yeah, no one said eyeballs had to be on the face. That's brilliant. It's like a mouth, isn't it? It's a mouth there, and there's it's, it's a face within a face within a gut. Yeah, that, gif that guy's definitely on the seafood diet. Gut face, that guy's cool. Uh, here we go. Graham Rigg with another beholder. That's superb, that. It looks like he's made that himself, maybe? Uh, possibly. He is a big beholder fanatic. Wow. What do beholders eat? I think people, probably. Wow. All right. Cool, there you go, Andy. So I shall stop sharing. Okay then. And I'll give you a drum roll. So, the award. The most spectacular eyeball goes to Mickey Jones again. Wow, it's a double scoop for Mickey. It is. She's definitely leading the way, heading for that Golden Weasel trophy at the moment. There's still plenty of awards left, though, for someone to turn it around. But, I mean, look how shiny it is as well. I think the placement of the eye definitely swayed it as well. Because, obviously, these awards weren't just for the quality of paint job. They're also for just how interesting or how funny or how enthralled you were by the particular piece of the miniature that we were looking at on this occasion. And for this particular model, the eyeball definitely looked right back at us and told us that it must be selected as the winner. It's, it's got the glaze, hasn't it, on it? That just gives it such realism. You can't tell whether it's an eyeball that's grown there or whether he's just eaten something that had an eyeball and it's just kind of got lodged in that hole in the gut. Either way, it's equally creepy. And I've also just noticed it looks like there's some kind of little heart shape there. It does. And there's a little spider on his gauntlet, isn't it? Yeah, is it? yeah, it looks like it, actually. Some kind of creature. Wow. A bit of a sparkly banner going on there as well. But yep, it's all about the eyeball right now. So in fact, how about this? Let's zoom right in on that eyeball, shall we? There we go. There's your winner, folks. Yeah, amazing. The gut eyeball. So shall we do another one, Mr. Wren? Let's do one more. I have a uh, category E is up next and that is category after your own heart andy it's the glorious hair award now i was barred from entering this just so you know because it would have been unfair on all the miniatures all right so gloom dready didn't have a lot of miniatures with impressive hair but she managed to dig out this one yeah that's quite a swirling mane isn't it Wow, what the hell is that? that? Yeah, I believe it's a frost giant princess. Oh. Yeah, because that's the model I've got as well. It was like a giant pygmy voodoo doll. A giant pygmy voodoo doll. That sounds like the name of a new band you should set up. <laughs> that's impressive. Well done, Dreddy. Thank you very much. Apparently Ooh. Mickey Jenba wants some of my hair as a prize. You should cut a lock of your hair. I'll consider giving away lots of my hair as a prize, but I don't want them to be planted at crime scenes around the world, though. <laughs> Danny Ashby, wow. What is that miniature? Pretty cool. I don't know what that's from. It looks old school. But it's certainly got an impressive hair swirl coming out of the top of his head there. That's marvellous. Um, we have... Mr. Sigvold himself, but this is Mickey Genver's paint job. Look at that. Yeah, Sigvold 
was actually modelled after me, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. Now, I don't think Sigvold would allow himself to go grey. Don't you? No, I think he'd just, you know, want to look eternally youthful. So he'd do anything he can not to have grey hair. So you think Mickey Jenver has missed a trick here? Maybe, maybe it's actually blue though. Maybe he's dyed it blue. Or he's got yeah, high. Well done, Mickey. Superb as usual. Uh, and and Andre Liguta. Look at that. I like that. Wow. It's a very it's impressive like, swirl, that isn't it? It's like that baddie from Hundred One One Dalmatians, Cruella. Yeah, it's like a cross between that and the kind of hairstyle that seems to be big in, I think it's in Japan you see hairstyles like that nowadays a lot. It's got kind of a manga, manga hairdo. Uh, this is Christopher Nurlings. Ooh. Look at that. Another very creepy looking miniature. And more pink hair. There's a bit of a theme here. Very nice. Wow, he's got some awesome miniatures, hasn't he? Yeah, we do have some spectacular painters in our audience. And we only, we only attract the best crowd. And uh, we've got Snugsy with the final entry. Black and amber hair. It's Fire Slayers. I can't remember what brand of Fire Slayers these are. Um, I can't remember either. But they're all the Fire Slayers were spectacular, weren't they? Are they, are they Volcarite Berserkers, maybe? Uh, that sounds about right. Wow, look at them. Quite spectacular, and lots of butt cheeks there as well. But they're, they're doing a nice little chain gang thing, aren't they? Doing a little dance. Lots of wonderful hair right there. Yeah, Congo. Wow. So, are we ready to find out the winner <laughs> for the most spectacular and amazing hair, worthy of being seen next to my hair? The winner is. Andre Lucuta. Wow. Quite spectacular and swirly. If my hair ever gets that long, then maybe I should mimic that style. Very, very, very tasty indeed. That is a uh, the unit. What are they called again? Uh, that is uh, the sea cloaks. A dread something, no? Um, dread, uh, dread Lord. What's, uh, what's, what's the name of that guy, actually? I think it's a converted character, is it? I don't think it's converted, actually. I think it's a, oh, isn't it? some kind of... Uh, oh, ah, the names. It looks like... What are those? What are the piratey Dark Elves called again? I've forgotten the name of them. Anyway, uh, it looks like... It, mind it looks like those, and it looks a bit like that. The fleet what's... master. That's what it is. It's a fleet master. Is, is it um, Lockyer or something? No, Lockyer Felhart. You're thinking of. He has a he has a golden mask. Yeah, but it's, it, it looks similar to him, doesn't it? Just with a different head. Yeah, corsairs. There we go. Who's corsairs? Who's the corsair leader? It's called a fleet master. Yes. Hey, pretty cool mini. Very, All right. Very tasty indeed. Well done. Now, should we take a break from that? I think we should. We don't want to wear people's excitement glands out too much. There's only so much excitement juice. What, what category did we just finish on? Was that F? That was hair that we just did then, yes. Hair. All right. So I think we've got, what, two more left? We've definitely got at least a few left. All right. So if you just chat in a sec, I'll get the others ready. Well, while you're preparing all that, I'm going to let the audience know that as you all are avid viewers of the Andean Rem Show, that means that you are glued via your eyeballs and the screen to the magnetic charisma that flows out of this show, at least 50% of which is down to me. So you might be interested to learn that there is a non-Age of Sigmar show being launched on this channel on Friday, covering any other game system that might interest me. So that could be Kings of War, 40k, bolt action, whatever people want me to talk about, pretty much as long as it's interesting. So you should probably check that out. It's going to be at the same start time as the Andean Rome show, just on Fridays. A lot of thought was put into which day of the week 
to put this show on. And also, the show doesn't have a name yet, actually. So if people in the audience would like to suggest a name, other than The Andy Show, which is the obvious one, and there will be guests on there from time to time as well. You won't just have to stare at me the whole time, even though I'm sure that wouldn't be entirely a bad thing. Because look at that. Look how delicious that is. Let's see what people are saying about that. I've got a name for it. Oh, have you now? B-listers. How about that? The name for your solo show? Well, unfortunately, that name of a show was already taken. I think it's a sub-series you've got running on your channel. Uh, no, I don't think so. You could call it Andy Palooza. Oh, I could call it Andy Palooza, but I don't want, to, people, don't want people to get confused with that and the actual Andy Palooza event. So let's see, has anyone made a suggestion for the name of that show yet? Let's see. I don't think they have, but I'll be keeping an eye on those. Oh, Christopher82, Andy in the Attic. Mastered and Wallen says Tremendous Fridays. Now, I don't think I could steal the word Tremendous for a, a show title away from Mr. Mitch. I think I'll leave that to him. Mr. Remington, have you got yourself prepared over there? I've found two more categories. Right. Yeah. And Mickey Jen, but I'm not going to call it the Rem show, oddly enough. <laughs> Love it. Oh, hold on, I've got three more categories. So if you give me 30 seconds, I shall have the remaining categories are all ready for you all. Uh, Stu Gibson says Orange Friday. Oh, that's nice. Something, maybe something to do with Orange, something to do with 2D6, something to do with Friday, something to do with Wargaming in general. I like Loser B-Lister. How about that? I'm not entirely sold on that one. There are a couple of aspects to it that I'm not completely keen on. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it in the maybe pile for now. Ready for category F, is it? Well, it, it is the most excessively decorated based category. Right then. Um, and our entries went a bit like this. Mickey Genvers. Wow. Look at that. That's extraordinarily amazing. That it's certainly is. And considering it's apparently just for one model. Wow. I could just stare at that for hours. No, minutes, maybe. You could stare at it for minutes and find something new each minute, couldn't you? Yeah. There's an mean... awful lot going on there. Wow. That's so clever. Look, the hands have been chopped off and put on there and then on a pitchfork and then some scrolls. You could just pick any segment of this and find... Oh, you can see the classic skulls there from the old GW skeletons under the rock. Yeah, that's the GW old skeleton spear. I recognise that anywhere. That? What's that from? Is that from a beast, man? Hmm, <laughs> I'm not sure on that one. What the hell is that base, isn't it? I mean, are they real? Are these twigs? Are they like real twigs? They could be. That is, well, beyond excessive. Exquisite. Well, Mickey, Remington wants to know if they're real, so let him know. All right. So, Gloom Dreddy has a fairly excessive base there. It does definitely hang over the edge a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> I do like that shield. Very nice. So that certainly could be considered excessive. Okay. And who else have we got? Ooh, Edvin Zvart. The goblin shaman is protecting the gobbo coke with his life. Gobbo cola. Love it. I wonder what flavour gobbo cola is. I think it probably tastes like snot. I don't know, though. Just because they're green, I think you're being a little bit prejudiced against them there. Don't you think perhaps goblins have an, a nice flavour for their favourite beverage? What do they like eating? Mushrooms? Could be mushroom flavour drink. I think it would taste like dandelion and burdock. I'm not, I don't know if it would be that nice. I think it might be more like Tizer, where the first sip is really delicious and then after that it's just terrible. Yeah. I'm with you there. So there you go. We've got three entries there. So let me take you back off the screen share, back to Andy, who will announce the winner. Okay. Here we go. Drum roll, please. The winner of the most excessive bass is... Mickey.
Becky Jenver. Wow, she's got the hat trick. Yep, it's the Jenver hat trick has been scored. <laughs> yep, look at the little skulls down there. I remember that skull in particular because I had quite a few of those left and I've used them in basing quite a few miniatures over the years. The skull with the split down it there. Very nice tentacles as well. That's superb. Was there a, like a monster that went on this base, or is apparently it... it's for the Glockkin? Oh, wow! So I think the Glockkin is going to look right at home on there. I love those tentacles. Where do you get them from, Mickey? They're cool. Very, very, very tasty indeed. Right, let's go to another one. Indeed. I right, I think we're on category F now, are we? No, oh, G. Yeah, uh, which one is that? That was, yeah, most successive base decoration was F, so we're on to G, and that is going to be the best pet award. Ah, uh, yes. So, of course, this was only open to miniatures, but we did invite pictures of everyone's real pets as well, just for the adorable factor. Okay. Skeleton flower is our first entry. Ooh, tiny little frogs. He does paint a lot of tiny little things, doesn't he? Incredibly well. He does. Easy, easy to hide when your girlfriend comes around. You don't want to see all your miniatures. Right? You could just pop them in a drawer somewhere. Easy. Yes, a top tip there from Mr. Remington. There you go. Nerd tip for you. Yeah. Well, if you don't have a girlfriend, you can start working big. Next one, Amy Snugs. Wow. She says, Does Dorgar count as Archeon's pet? So let's have a closer look at Dorgar here. He's going to take a lot of um, house training. Yeah, a lot of. It's going to be a full time job, I think, looking after him. Yeah, they say that one of the most difficult pets that you can have is a fox because apparently they only obey when you're actually looking directly at them and the rest of the time they run wild. I have a feeling this pet might be in that similar vein. I don't think you're going to be able to keep it disciplined and calm when you're not around. I think when you go out, you're just going to come back and just your sofa's going to be scorched. Your entire fridge is probably going to be eaten. <laughs> I think that's an amazing paint job, nonetheless. I've got Andrew Judd. This is debut contribution. What do you call nerdling them? down there on his base? What do you call these guys again? I can't remember. Those are plague bearers. That's it. Wow. Yeah, he's having a great time down there, isn't he? Rolling it's around. He is. It looks yeah. like he's fallen out of his belly. Hmm. Maybe that's what happened. Mark Anthony Wyatt is posted his real cheek. Cheek. Yep, the ultimate hamster there, apparently. In honor of Cheeks, the game. He's the Kickstarter, for which is now finished, of course, so I won't be heavily promoting it quite so much for a while. Leonard's a nice name, isn't it? That's very nice. And Skeleton Flower has shown us a picture. Oh, look, he's actually he's painting in a really old school Chaos Dwarf there. I would not let a cat paint an old school Chaos Dwarf. You know. <laughs> the cat's not even looking when it's painting either. That's just careless. Yeah, the cat looks like he's done something wrong and he's been found out. Like, uh-oh, you walked in on me painting your Chaos Dwarf army with a giant brush. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Gloom Dreddy. Ew. He always brings his two little friends. What is that? It's like a slug man. A slug man and he's carrying two... Adorable nerglings in his hand by the looks of it. Look, he's about to give birth to two more as well. Wow. Everyone loves nerglings. That is gross in the, in the best possible way. Uh, a pygmy witch doctor taking his giant frogs for a walk. This is Urs Ursula McMavis. That is just a superb concept to start with. Let's have a close look. We'll start with the pygmy witch doctor. I'm very familiar with this one. Oh, look, has she flocked its head? I can't really tell. 
it's not the highest quality picture, is it? I think she needs to get a better camera. Possibly. But you can, you can see the toads quite well, though, can't you? The toads Rocks. are so well camouflaged as well. They look very realistic. Yeah, when I, was, when I first looked at the picture, I couldn't tell that the one on the right was actually there until I looked closer. It's done a very good job it there. It blends in so well. Uh, Nick Andretti. Ooh. It's one of those corn dogs. <laughs> <laughs> See, it just, it's just, well, Golden Nuggets just come out. Don't even did think. You, did you just make an incredible joke without even realizing? <laughs> okay. So, is that all the entries? All right. Thank you, Nick. Uh, no, there is. A, uh, ooh, got oh, no, it's not all the entries. Mr. Ronkin just clicked on the comments there for some reason. Jen Boy's really outdoing herself tonight. Look at that. We've got a, a high elf. El Reaver, is it? Something like that, with a pet horse. Now, this was possibly stretching the boundaries of the rules a little bit for counting a mount as a, a pet. But I suppose um, technically it could be a pet as well. Oh, but when you read what she's written, this was painted by Sophie, who's Mickey's niece. She's only eight, and uh, so she can't have a Facebook account. So it's been submitted on behalf of Sophie, and I think for an eight-year-old, that is phenomenal. That is definitely amazing. That um, is, wow. I think the only the downside there that could prevent Mickey's niece from taking this award is the fact that I'm not sure it qualifies entirely as a pet. But there's definitely an honorary win just for painting that at eight years old. That is superb. So, Edwin, Dzvart, which one's the pet? Well, that is the question. I know which one I'd, I'd take in a fight. I'd rather be the, uh, the guy on the bottom, for sure. And here's one of my favourites, probably because he's got halflings in. This is, I don't know how to say your name, I'm sorry, Kells Ratface Brandt. Wow. Hey, we've got a face for Ratface. I did feel like pressing that face thing. I'll check that out later. But there you go. We've got some... Um, Halflings from the okay. troll. What, 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 what's the company called that do these? Uh, I'm not sure on these exact ones, but you can see the pet pig there. It looks like a bit of a vicious pig, doesn't it, with teeth sticking out down in the bottom right there. Hmm. Don't mess with the halflings pig. Do not mess with the halflings pig. Look, you can see you can you can kind of see a blurry picture of Ratface's face there. It doesn't it doesn't look too ratty. Looks a bit Abraham Lincoln-y. Yeah, it might, might not be a real face. It might be too ashamed of his actual rat-like face to show it for real. So, there you go, Andy. Do we have a winner? We certainly do. So, let's get another one of your famous echoing drum rolls. <laughs> the winner is, for the best <laughs> pet, Ursula McMavis. For the two giant toads of doom. Wow. It, just the paint job alone. That is impressive, isn't it? I especially like the, the kind of white pattern that runs through it. I think that's why it was so disguised from my vision that I had no idea it was there. I was looking around on the base at all these blobs of color, thinking, well, which one of them is the tiny little toad? Uh, I saw the green one first, and then this other one still didn't actually register in my brain until I was looking at it for quite a while. <laughs> so it's very, very, very impressive petting there from Ursula McMavis. So shall we move on to the next one, Mr. Remington, which is the final award? Okay. Uh, and this award is category H. It's the award for the miniature, which has the snazziest pants. Snazzy pants, indeed. Okay, so here we go with Skeleton Flower to kick us off. Wow. Now, when that goes into focus, my word, what a brilliant miniature. It's like a giant ogre jester with uh, scissor claws. 
yeah, that must be Malifaux again. Only if that game could have something so crazy. But focusing on the content of the award, Stasius Pants, it definitely does have pants that are not short in the SNAS department. Absolutely superb, that one. Well done. Well done. Okay, next we have uh, Mickey. I don't have any snazzy pants. I don't think Mickey believes in pants. Uh, but we can't have a category with one entry. So I'm entering the robes that I'm doing the freehand on at the moment. So it's almost pants. It's close, but I'm not sure if it qualifies. And if you think about it, it might be a little bit unfair if Mickey's butt and Mickey's pants both won awards. It's just, I mean, this miniature is going to just going to be amazing when it's finished. Really. Uh, okay, next we have Gloom Dready. Uh, some zombie surfer pants. Zombie surf shorts. They are definitely quite snazzy, aren't they? They're definitely on the scale of snazziness. Does do you think the blood splatter reduces the level of snaz somewhat? No, it's in character, isn't it? It works. It is. And we have just one more entry, and that's Edvin with his orc war boss. Now yeah, those are quite snazzy as well, aren't they? There are a couple of different patterns going on there on each leg. Fancy pants. Stolen from an Empire General. Stitched together from the pants of numerous Empire Generals, I imagine. Oh, yes, look, you see a... a yeah, surely, surely no one Empire General's pants would be enough to house the mammoth legs of an orc. Oh, it's got a big head, isn't it? Yeah, very snazzy. Thank you very much, Edwin. Snazz levels to the max. So, I'm going to take you back. Okay, so, folks... It's time to find out the winner of the final Golden Weasel Award for Snazziest Pants. Drum roll. The winner is... Ba -ba 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 -ba, skeleton Flower. There we go. They are indeed the snazziest pants in all the land. Out, out of ten, how snazzy would you say those pants are? Well, I think in reality those pants would be actually very very dirty because he's going to struggle taking them off with hands like that isn't he he might are those his actual hands or are his hands in some kind of device or have his hands been cut off and replaced by those devices i don't know how he would take the devices off nonetheless the, the pants are superb maybe he has like a a noblar uh a noblar guy helping him undress that is entirely possible I mean, if you could have your own personal nobbler to help take your pants off after a long, sweaty night, would you? Like I a would. butler? I don't, I don't really like to wear pants in bed. So you would like a nobbler to de-pants you before you go to bed, essentially? Um. Well, we could make it a blind nobbler, if that helps. <laughs> Although you can't account for the roaming hands of a blind nobbler who's supposed to be de-panting you. Never underestimate the inestimable value, inestimable value of a nobbler. Might, might be more talented than you know. Well, with those wise words from Mr. Remington, congratulations to all the winners. We'll be in touch with each of them to go over which, which prize from the prize pool would be most suitable to their needs. And also, of course, since Mickey Gender took home not one, not two, but three Golden Weasel Awards, then she'll be receiving the coveted Golden Weasel Trophy. So congratulations, of course. Where's that applause button, Mr. Ren, that you've been so eager with? <laughs> there we go. So almost a year of this show now. Next wow. week, it'll be one year. Are you surprised we've made it this far? I am. I'm surprised I've made it. Carried hey, on. You haven't missed too many shows in that time either, despite your rock star lifestyle. I think I've missed four, maybe five. Yeah, a handful. 
you missed. You had that, that one period where you missed about three weeks in a row where you were away yeah. touring worldwide. Yeah, I think you've only missed one or two, maybe two. I missed one, and that was it. That's impressive. One. That's really good. I mean, you have to think, like, when Warhammer Weekly first came out, they had about, I think in the first year, they had two or three presenters before they kind of, you know, got a lot of stability with um, Vince, who's been presenting it for ages now. Doing a great job. They, well. they did go through a lot of people, didn't they? They used to mix it around with different people's channels until he really grabbed it firmly by the hair and made it his own. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's time for what the hell is that, don't you? Do you indeed? Yes, I do. <laughs> what the hell is that? 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 Only Andy and Remington know. What the hell is that? 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 Only Andrew and Remington know. Well, you know at least this week. Now, I didn't know. Mr. Remington, the last what the hell is that you did, people found it a little bit on the difficult side. I toned it down a bit last week and it was a little bit more manageable. What's the difficulty level of this one? It, this out of 10? The first week with difficulty of 9.5. Today's difficulty rating is an 8. 8? Well, everyone, get ready to type away. How many miniatures are featured in the image, first of all? Four miniatures are featured. And oh, they look goodness. a little bit like this. Here we go. Here we what go. What the hell is that? Bum, 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 bum. Well, what the hell is that? So we have four different GW models combined. Yep, typing away, everybody. To make Four miniatures. Some kind of mutant. Some kind of hideous abomination. Some kind of chimera. Which is, of course, a combination of different creatures. So that's what we've ended up with here. We've got a bit of a bald head with some lines on it. We've got a blade. We've got some kind of fur or some other kind of hair products going on. And we've got a pair of legs with a little skirt there. Hmm. So, are you keeping an eye on the comments, Mr. Remington, to see if anyone gets it right? I'm screen sharing, so I can't. Well, I will give you the people's guesses as they come in. So here they come, they come fast. So, from Skeleton Flower, he says, Slaughter Priest, Zombie, Cockatrice, and Ogre Manita. Um, you almost... Getting close. Fluffy Dread says Ogre Tyrant, Cockatrice, Slaughter Priest, Zombie. Almost. Almost. Uh, let's see. Sebastian Blau. Chimera, Plastic Zombie, Ogre Blood Reaver, and Dark Elf Corsair. Deux points. People are getting close here. Andrew Wade. Slaughter Priest, Arcane's Mount, Manita, and Zombie. You have to be more specific. You can't just say man eater. Oh. Let's see. We've got Stu Gibson, Cockatrice, Ogre Manhunter, Slaughter Priest, and Old Ghoul. De Point. Oscar Dahlstrom, Slaughter Priest, Cockatrice, Ogre Butcher, Zombie. Say again. Slaughter Priest, Cockatrice, Ogre Butcher, Zombie. Trois points. Oh, that's pretty damn close. Uh, Christopher, 82. Ogre, Cockatrice, Flagellant, Slaughter Priest. Deux points. And apparently, Matthias Schaefer has had What the Hell Is That Song stuck in his head for weeks now. <laughs> I must record these songs. You know, I've got a summer holiday coming up. I'm going to record our theme tune. And make it downloadable. Yes, but what we've actually been thinking about doing is making the full Andy and Rome show soundtrack and then launching it initially to all the patrons, which I think will be a nice touch, won't it? 
Lovely. And if you listen to the B side of that soundtrack, then you'll hear my renditions of all the songs. Mm. Maybe so. it's the C side. Uh, let's see. YouTube newbie, a potato peeler, arcane seatbelt, a Land Raiders brake discs, and Mickey Jenvers pants. I think that is totally wrong, newbie. No, because you wouldn't sing Mickey Jenvers pants, so no, that's wrong. Uh, Fluffy Dread, Ogre, Araby, Manita, Cockatrice, Zombie, Slaughter Priest. Say again? Ogre, Araby, Manita, Cockatrice, Zombie, Slaughter Priest. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, we have a winner. Fluffy Dread takes it. Fluffy Dread, well done, but I have to give my sympathies to Skeleton Flower because he was so close, but he just said Maneater, and it required a more specific answer. Painfully close, if you will. Painfully close. Now, I do have a finished images one, um, but I can't find it. Maybe I threw it away in my trash. Why would you have done that, Mr. Remington? I don't know. That would have been mighty foolish. Do you, do you want to see them? Yes, we do, of course. Ah, well, I was just looking at my traps then. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Oh dear, oh dear. See, you won't get this on the other shows. Wait, that, there it is. No, that's the old one. Other shows wouldn't go dredging through their recycle bins to bring out what you, the audience, demand to see. Oh, no, I, oh, I don't know. No, no I, I think he's lost it. I thought I had it. Sorry, okay. guys. It's gone. Hey, got it right. it's a, it's a, you had to have said Araby Maneater. That was. I thought that was going to be the tricky one, but obviously it wasn't. It wasn't hard enough this week. It's very hard to get that very delicate balance between something not too hard, but something kind of obscure as well. Yeah, you're walking a fine line, aren't you? Between it being I, completely impossible and way too easy. I thought the, the zombie legs would flummox people, but I was wrong. You were wrong indeed. So, I think what we should do now is have another look at all the winners before we start wrapping up. So, it's like a Hall of Fame. So, Mr. Remington, would you like to sing us a Golden Weasel inspired song while we're looking through all these? What was the song you said before? Well, I suggested that you should amend the words to Goldfinger, to Gold Weasel. And I think you're perfectly capable of that. Okay, I've got something here. Gold Weasel He's the man A man with a fur of gold He's the man delivers a prize to the winner on the Andy and Remington show. Gold Weasel. That's not long enough, I haven't shown them all yet. It's the prize, the prize that everyone wants. Gold Weasel, I've got to look in the bargain bin to find some suitable prizes. I've got a magic unpainted unicorn. I've got some black hawks and a myriad GW images from the 80s. Gold Weasel. Well done to Mickey Genver. She got a hat trick of prizes and she keeps the award for a whole year. She will, in fact, be the Golden Weasel champion for the entire year and she'll get to keep that coveted Golden Weasel trophy, which I can't show you right now because it's still secretly being worked on. But she gets to keep that forever, of course. There will be a new Golden Weasel trophy each year. And I think next year we'll introduce a whole pile of new categories 
or even zanier things. So you've got an entire year to think of some category suggestions for the next Golden Weasel Awards. Now, on to next week. The year of the show, a year of Age of Sigmar. So after this show's over, when you're leaving your permanent comments, which of course you should be doing every week, you can suggest anything you would like us to talk about on that year, reflecting, looking back on a year of Andy and Rem and a year of Age of Sigmar. Any topics you'd like us to cover? And also, on the show that is, is debuting this Friday, the Andy only show, if you will, for other game systems, not Age of Sigmar, then there's going to be a little segment on that show called Question and Andy, rather than Question and Answer. You see that because my name begins with an A. So Q&A is Question and Andy rather than Answer. It's quite funny, isn't it? So if you would like to put hashtag Question and Andy or hashtag Q and Andy and then leave any kind of question wargaming related that could then be answered on that show in the permanent comments. That would be very much appreciated as well. Hash, hashtag B-Lister. That's got a nice ring to it. I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> so, Mr. Rem. I don't think it's high time you sang us out, Andy, don't you? What do you mean high time? I did that last week. I did plenty of singing. Did you? I, yeah. did, I did two songs last week. I might have fast-forwarded that bit. <laughs> I did two songs and then Crabbington Steel did one as well. You, mu you must have heard Crabbington Steel's outro. Come on, we've missed your banshee wailing. It's been too long. It's been a week. <laughs> I think people have missed your singing more than that. I'll tell you what, everyone will be singing on the one-year anniversary show next week. Oh, why is that, Andy? Uh, because it's the one-year anniversary and everyone should sing. I think if you're a guest, you must sing a song or rap a song. Yeah, you can rap if you want. Definitely. And listen, we've not forgotten about Sean from Blue Table Painting, and he will be on the show. Like, no, I've actually had unconfirmed reports that his internet is actually completely stable and upgraded now. So we're just waiting for him to be available at the right time. That's going to be amazing. I've got a list of questions ready for him. Yeah, you've been living for that moment, and the fact that it had to be delayed. You, you feel like your life's been put on hold almost, don't you? <laughs> All right, the people are asking for my music. Um, I could play us out with something, I guess. Well, here's the thing. Let's uh, let's get the audience to suggest a song for you to play us out with. Because I'm sure the audience have their own personal music tastes. And they could suggest a song that you could then change, amend the words, make them a bit more Andy and Rem or Golden Weasel related, perhaps, or Age of Sigmarified. If anyone has any suggestions, get them flying in there now while he's tuning up his instrument, as Remington likes to do, sprawled well, out on the sofa of a lonely night. I've been working on a little ditty. I haven't adapted the lyrics in favour of your luxurious hair, but I think they'll do for tonight. Well, I just can't say no to that if it's a song about my luxurious hair. Okay. And we have got some suggestions as well, if you want to take a look at any of those. The Lion King theme... California Uber Alice, Stay Away to Heaven, which is in the news at the minute because apparently they ripped it off from a 60s band called Spirit. 25 million pound lawsuit on the way there. Stay Away to Sigma. I like that. Uh, Say La Vie, Angel of Death by Slayer. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, Cotton Eye Joe. The British Anthem. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the Rem and Andy rules. Coronation Street theme. People are struck by the doors. Are any of these grabbing you? Uh, the theme to Conan. Well, we did start that off. Even though it was Conan the, the Destroyer. Best theme song, worst film. Okay, I think if you're not grabbed by any of those ideas, you'll just have to go with the luxurious hair. Here is 
irresistible you I'd like to warm myself beside my favorite girl my favorite girl irresistible you I don't feel no chill when I hold you in my arms and the view is calling me ooh yeah Sunday morning when you hear that doorbell ring let's pretend we didn't hear a thing now Sunday morning the sound of coke trains love supreme we got a love supreme irresistible you a boo do 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 Luxurious hair.